Okay, so let's go through chapter 3, starting in verse 1. I knew you wanted me to read this. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word. I mean, isn't that, have you ever heard a message on that? Did you know the second word is more important than the first word of verse 1? What's the second word? Wives what? In your Bible, anybody have an old version? Wives what? Say it louder, you got it right. Likewise. Wives are not first in this line. It's backing up this, this whole submission thing. Starts way back in, in verse 18 of chapter 2, where he said, Servants be submissive to your masters. Then he says, Wives be submissive. And then look what he says in verse 7. Husbands likewise. This is a, everybody needs to be submissive chapter. But you know what I wrote? This was my observation. God designed gender-specific roles. He's writing to wives. Did you know they all know who they were? They knew God had order. Did you know we're growing disorderly in our world more and more? And as, as you know, Paul has said, as Travis said, as, as we know, God designed gender-specific roles, and the idea of submission is tied way back to where it starts in 2.13 and 2.18, and we're to be following our biblical roles and relationships. Do you know, for me, I would love to not have to do what a man does. I mean, it's hard to make decisions. It's hard to lead. It's hard to protect. It's hard to provide. And that's why in America we have the passive male syndrome, where men are passive and the women fill in the void. And what happens is, in children's minds, things get confused. That the mother, you know, is running the show and the kids are with her and the husband is in his chair or in his man cave or in his shop or in his, at his computer or gaming console, depending on his age. And kids grow up. And you talk about dysphoria. They don't see what it says in, and I'm not doing 1 Corinthians, but if I was doing I'd read 1 Corinthians 11, which it says, as the father is the head of the son, and the son is the head of the church, so the husband should be head of the family, oh, and the wife, and the children under. And God has this very specific order that our world does not like. Now look, reading the whole thing, what it says. I'm going to keep reading to verse 2. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely, I like that merely, it's italicized, but don't let it be merely outward. Don't just work on the outward person. Arranging your hair, wearing gold, putting on fine apparel. But rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. But the best part of the verse is, which is very precious in the sight of God. If I knew God was looking for something, that's what I would want to do and to be. And what I see is generations of people that are more concerned about what everyone else thinks than what God wants, desires, or in his word, that is precious in his sight. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women trust God also, adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. What I like from that, I mean, this is what's so fun about it. You only write down what you, what lessons the Lord brings to your heart. God explains, I wrote, God explains true beauty. Godly wives are adorned with the beauty that God appreciates. God likes gentle quietness. In fact, when he describes his son, remember that? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am what? Meek and lowly. Is that something people put under their names, you know, on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or wherever you post, you know, your descriptors? I am meek and lowly. But that's what Jesus is. And see, Christianity has gotten permeated with the world's values instead of God's. So, Number one, God designed gender-specific roles. That was on my heart as I read this chapter. Number two, God explains true beauty. 